Well, thank the Lord for Chase Pender and Jordan Green. Uh, the game could have been a lot different if not for those two great defensive plays in the second inning. Uh, bases loaded, Jordan Green uh, makes a great play on the fly ball down the line, uh, you know, to keep him from scoring. And then uh, Pender uh, robs uh, what would have been a grand slam. So uh, just two great uh, defensive plays right there. They scored two in the third. Uh, you know, it could have been six to nothing uh, at that point, but it wasn't. And you know, they gave us a fighting chance uh, because of their uh, great defensive plays uh, on a day where we didn't necessarily play our best defense. Uh, but, um, you know, you look at the at-bats that we had in the fourth and the fifth. Uh, we had six great at-bats in a row, um, you know, capped off by Green's two-strike double down the line uh, to give us a big inning. We scored four runs, kind of broke it open there in the fourth inning. And then in the fifth with two outs, uh, a hit by pitch to Williams, back-to-back -back three two-count walks where we won those at-bats. And then Robert Jolly with the big double scored two runs. So, um, you know, overall, uh, we pitched uh, pretty good. Um, defense was, was good enough. And uh, again, we had a nice day at the plate uh, where we swung the bats and uh, took advantage of some walks, uh, had some two out hits and, and did some things. Uh, played a pretty good baseball game and it's always uh, good to finish on a high note on the weekend. So, uh, uh, great weekend and uh, got a tough week ahead of us. Uh, got to turn right back around, get ready for Charleston Southern on Tuesday. Uh, then we go to Tallahassee. We all know how tough it is uh, to win in Tallahassee. So uh, got a big week ahead of us. Uh, guys need to rest, recover a little bit, enjoy uh, what's always a, a, a great thing when you, when you sweep a series. Uh, but we also got to keep things in perspective and, and get re-energized and ready for a big week. Which would you say to your guys after Virginia Tech, Tech took the two nothing lead there in the third? You know what I told them. Uh, I just I just told them I said, hey, look, guys, uh, we we've made a few errors. We're hitting some balls on the end of the bat. Uh, you know, it has nothing to do with with hustle or focus. It's baseball, and all I was really trying to do is just make sure that they weren't getting frustrated uh, because we didn't make a couple plays. You know, I just wanted to make sure that the guys understood that hey, these things happen. We've been here plenty of times before. Just relax. Was put together good at bats. We talked a little bit about what their starting pitcher was doing to us and what type of adjustments we needed to try to make it to plate. We were hitting a lot of balls on the end of the bat. He had his, he was commanding his changeup uh, early in the game, so we tried to change our focus a little bit at the plate and what we were looking for, and just made some adjustments. Um, and the kids did a good job of uh, of adjusting to him and not letting early. Uh, physical mistakes, which they were, physical mistakes are going to happen. Not letting physical mistakes early uh, in the ball game affect them. And Pat did an unbelievable job of not letting it affect him. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, he just kept trying to pound strikes and pound strikes and let the defense work behind him. Uh, so you know, we faced some adversity early, and the guys kept their cool, kept their focus, stayed relaxed, and uh, just kept plugging away. Probably seen guys rob guys have home runs, but have you ever seen a Grand Slam robbed? I've never seen a Grand Slam robbed, and uh, yeah, I, I can remember a couple of amazing catches uh, in my career as a coach. I've never seen a catch that good. I mean, that was that was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, if he, do, again, if he doesn't catch that ball, uh, I mean, that's a Grand Slam. That's a big inning right there in the second inning. And they scored two runs in the third. I mean, it's really tough to come back from a big inning period. You know, you give up a big inning in, in any inning of a ball game, it's really tough to recover from that. But, you know, Pender's just one of those guys at the end of the day. And if you got a guy like Chase Pender on your team, he really, really helps you win in a lot of different ways. Coach, uh, short um, one out of work for uh, Hennessy there. Did you just want to save him with the short rest coming up? No, I didn't really think about it that way. We were really looking at it more from a matchup standpoint. Uh, we just wanted to get him in there they, when they pinch hit and brought in Monday, uh, you know, to hit the left-hander. We had Hennessy getting ready, and um, we brought him in to face the left-hander. And then after that, we felt like uh, the bottom of the order at that point, we felt like the better matchup was to bring in Andrews, who's got a good slider, versus three right-handed hitters or four right-handed hitters in a row who are better versus lefties. The guy on deck had three hits versus crawl. So we didn't want him, he, we, did, we did not want him to see a fourth at bat versus a left-handed pitcher. We wanted to make sure he saw a right-hander.
speaking of the bottom of the order, you got great run production today from the bottom of the order. We, we certainly did. Uh, you know, Cox had a good day, scored a run, drove in two, hit the big, well, single. Um, <laughs> um, so I was a little frustrated by that, I have to admit. Um, but uh, Robert Jolly, great day. Uh, drove in two, had two hits, almost had a third hit. Shortstop made a great play. Uh, and then Greeny, um, that was a huge hit. I mean, it, it, that hit right there broke the game open for us. So that was that was a big at bat. So uh, yeah, overall, it's always it's always awesome to get good production uh, from the bottom half of the order. Coach Seth was hit by a pitch again today. I think that's his eighth of the season, 37 walks. How, how much does that influence you know his ability to get in a rhythm hitting? Well, Seth's a tough kid, you know. I mean, Seth, you, you think about it this way. You know, Seth Beer, everybody knows who Seth Beer is. You know, he, everywhere, that every ballpark he goes to, he's got the bullseye on his back. Everybody wants to see what Seth's going to do today. You know, so for a young man, all eyes are on him, uh, you know, and uh, that dugout knows who he is. And they know that, like most power hitters, you know, you got to try to get in there some. You can't just try to throw the ball out over the plate where he can get extended and do damage. So he gets hit because people try to pitch him in. And I think the mindset is, or it would be for me too, if I was in the other dugout, you know, pound him in. And if you hit him, it's only one base, you know, because if you miss, again, you miss, you keep going in there and you miss, you know, he's going to hit one on top of the batting cage. So it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, for most guys, you got to try to tie them up sometimes, and if you hit them, it's just one base. So, but he does a good job of understanding our offense, of understanding that getting on base is, is what we do and what we try to do, and uh, and that means if you get hit by a pitch, take your base. I mean, you look at what we did, you know, after hit by pitches. I mean, hit by hit, getting hit deflates the defense. It just does. I mean, it's just amazing. Watch how many times a guy gets hit by a pitch, and then what happens after that. You know, Chris Williams gets hit by a pitch. Two walks, boom. You know, big inning. So it just, it's a little bit deflating sometimes, and, uh, but he understands, you know, that's our box. You know, when the Tigers get in the box, that's ours. You know, we're not gonna get out of the way. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna wear it, and we're gonna go to first base. That's just what we do. 28-5, and five, and you've swept three of the five ACC series. Are you starting to, to get a feel for what kind of team you have this year now that you're past that Nimway point and, and what you have yeah. going for? I mean, I, I think we have a, a good feel for our club, um, you know, and big thing that we're just trying to do is just make sure, number one, you know, we've been winning an awful lot and I always want to make sure that they enjoy it and that they keep things in perspective, you know, that even though, uh, you know, winning has become the norm uh, through this season so far, we've got a lot of games to go. We've got a lot of tough opponents ahead of us. But at the end of the day, you got to respect the game. And you got to respect the process of showing up every single day, being a blue collar oriented team, working as hard as you can, staying grounded, uh, playing hard, being a great teammate, uh, competing as hard as you can. And you know, just because we've won the series on Saturday, that can't dictate how we compete on Sunday. And uh, you know, because what happens is, is when we go through tough times, which at some point this team's going to go through tough times, we got to draw upon how hard we work and how hard we compete, because that's the only way you're going to get out of it. And uh, so, big message to our guys right now is just stay grounded, stay focused, keep competing, uh, but also enjoy it. You know, enjoy when we win. You know, we got some guys that you know sometimes are a little down, maybe because they had a tough day. Uh, but uh, you know, anytime you can win a ball game and win a series, is something that you have to enjoy and appreciate. And uh, just got to keep working hard and, and uh, stay grounded.